Welcome to the lab. Today I'm going to be giving you a short demo of the new Nanosite Pro. So I'm Jake Austin and I work here on the product development team and I'm really excited to show you what it can do. So Nanosite Pro is quick, easy and accurate, which you're going to see shortly. And I'm going to start off by showing you how we load the sample. So to start off with, we're going to be talking about the hardware side of it. So we have our laser module here. It's got a nice new grip on it. It's very ergonomic, makes it easy to hold. Then inside we have the bits we need to put on. So we've got holder inside the instrument for the low volume flow cell so we can now put this on top using these guides then we've got our screws as well can be held in the instrument we just screw these in secure the flow cell to the laser module so it's two in each opposite corner and then once we've got our screws in we can now put in the inlet tube for which the sample will go into the measurement window through and then finally our outlet tube for which the waste will go out through Now our laser module is ready for the sample to go into it. So we do this using a syringe. So this sample we've got today is some exosomes that have come from urine. So we're just going to load these in slowly. So now we can put the laser module into the instrument. We do this by just putting it inside this new ramp, which makes it slide in easily into the guiding rails. And it then locks into place. And then we just put our tubing into the catch, close the door. And now the syringe goes into the syringe pump. So we just need to adjust that put the syringe down and then lock it in place. Now that we've finished setting up the sample, it's all ready to measure and we can move on to the software. We start off on the home page. So here we can look at things such as the instrument status, um, check that things are connected properly. We can look at our favorite projects and experiments and also we can get news and updates from all analytical. But where we set up our measurements is in the measure page. So here is where we can set up our measurements and capture them. So if we start the camera, immediately we should see our particles. So here we can see these sort of dots dancing around on the screen and each one of these represents a particle. So they're undergoing Brownian motion, which is what's causing them to move around in random movements. And each one you can see is various different sort of sizes. And this pretty much correlates to what size they are in your sample. So to get a quick idea of how uh, the size might be for your sample, you can click on the preview overlay. This gives you a very quick graph, get an idea of what the size population might be. And once you're happy with that, you can then look at actually setting up your measurement normally. So what you can do here is you can do it one of two ways. You can either do it using manual setup or you can do auto setup, which is much easier to do. So we're going to start off here by using the autofocus. So I just click on this and then the software will look for the best focus for this sample. So the software has now found the optimum setting for the focus. So now we can look at setting up the rest of the measurement. So what you might do to find this easier is to uh, get the sample flowing. So now I'm going to start off the syringe pump at a high flow. So we just turn it on here and then click the 200. And once that gets going, we can then slow it down and just make sure we get a slower, steady flow to make sure we can track this Brownian motion of the particles. So now that we've got the flow going, we can actually set up the measurements. So we start off by doing this by giving it a name. So what our sample is here is exosomes. So I'm just going to call it that. And these exosomes have actually been labelled with a membrane dye, which allows us to do fluorescence measurement. So we can create this here. And what this gives us is a new measurement, which already has the scatter and fluorescence parts built in. So for the scatter part to set this up, we've already got our settings here. So we can just click apply current settings, which gives us them all uh, over here. And I'm just going to lower the number of captures to keep the measurement shorter for this demo. And then the fluorescence part, which we've not actually shown how you can do that yet, I'm just going to show now. So what we can first do is apply our filter. You can see now you can't see the particles, but when I increase the um, exposure and contrast to make it brighter, you should start to see them come through here. Might just make the screen a little bit brighter as well to help see them better for this. And then again, now that we're happy with those, result, uh, those settings, we can again click apply current settings, puts them all in here. Now we're just gonna change our number of captures down to three, and then we can click play and then the measurement will run as well before that point, but now it's going to start capturing. So you see this green progress bar going along and it will go through three of those captures. And each time in between the captures, it flushes sample through, ensuring that the sample is not going to be photo bleaching during the measurement. And then once this sample has uh, finished all three captures, it will then move on to the fluorescence part. And then it will start off with the camera off because again, we want to avoid photo bleaching so the camera won't be on, so we avoid disturbing our sample and it's gonna run the measurement. And when it captures, um, again, it will, what it'll do in between each capture 
is it will turn off the camera, again, to avoid that photo bleaching and making sure we're going to get a good fluorescence measurement so we can compare well to our scatter part. Because once these are both done, the software automatically overlay those two parts of the measurement and make it easy for the user. So now that measurement's finished, the processing will be happening in the background. And what that means is we can either look at other data in the software that we've measured before, or we can run a different sample. But for sake of this, we'll just be using the same one. So I can just start the camera again. Create a new sample. And just run a scatter measurement this time. So we just apply our current settings and click go. Once our measurement is finished processed in the analyze page, we can quickly see what uh, our results are. So here we've got our exosome measurement we did earlier um, and we've got an overlay of the two results. We've got the scatter part and the fluorescence part and you can compare those two distributions straight away. We've also got a fluorescence efficiency value. This gives you a good idea of the ratio between those two uh, measurements. We can also look at other things separately. So what the size values are such as the mode and mean for each one and we can switch between them. We can then also look at the tracks for these videos. So for example, here we've got the size uh, the scatter tracks for the exosomes and we can play through them and have a look at what they look like. We can also compare two results. So we've got an exosome measurement we did earlier today and we can overlay those two and have a look at how repeatable they have. So here we've got some nice repeatability overlay really nicely. And we've also got our quality page. So here we can look at things like our data quality guidance, giving us an idea of if we've got any possible issues with the measurement, if there's anything we do to improve them. And then finally, we've got our report page where we can customize the report and use it to print it off as a PDF. And that's the end of the demo. I really hope today you've been able to see how quick, easy and accurate the new Nanosite Pro is. And I really hope you've enjoyed it. Today we've looked at exosomes, but it's also really versatile and can be used for other nanoparticles and bioparticles, such as nanobubbles, lipid nanoparticles and viruses. And if you have interest in any of these applications, then please contact your Malvern Panalytical representative.